Hey guys, just doing a quick video on how a Powerwall works, how the Tesla Generation 1 gateway uh, works with the Powerwall to either feed power to your home or either charge from solar or whatever you need the Powerwall to do. Um, so a quick rundown of how the Powerwall works is that you have this gateway, and this gateway is kind of the brains behind the whole Powerwall. Um, what the gateway does is it sits between your electrical meter that's on the side of your house and your breaker box that's, it might be on the side of your house too, or it might be in your basement, it might be somewhere else inside of your home. Um, so to go over kind of the power flow is the power will come into your meter. It will go from your meter into your service panel and then from your service panel, they'll put this gateway up and the gateway will have electrical feeds from the meter. Those electrical feeds will come in. For mine, it's on the top. Uh, yours might be, you know, flipped around from how this is. But what you'll see is you you see these two different lugs. And the, the dual lugs down here is on your home side of the electrical supply. And the single lugs are the feed from your electrical provider. And so the power will come in through these 220 volt hot leads. Each of these are 120 combined, it's 240 volts. So the power will go in, it will go through this electrical monitor here. And this, it has a magnet in it and it reads the electrical field that's going through the uh, piece of copper right there. And that's what's detecting how much power is going in or out of your home. Um, once it goes through that, inside of here are what are called contactors. And the contactors, another place you'll run into them is for your air conditioning system on the side of your house. You'll have a compressor out there, and that compressor has a fan. That The fan that's on the compressor unit outside of your home it has these contactors in it. And the contactor is driven by a magnet. So the magnet will activate and it will cause the contactor to close. By closing, it's bridging the, electro the metal together and that's how the electrons are gonna flow through. Um, so these contactors, most of the time they're closed. Pretty much all the time they are closed so that the power is either flowing from the meter through the monitor and then into your home. Um, once it goes through there, then it'll go to the two hot leads that go into your house. There's your neutral or your common, and then you have a ground that goes up to the ground bar. And the ground bar is actually, the whole box is grounded. Um, so that's kind of how the wires are hooked up. Now, when you're using your power wall, these sensors, will read how much power is coming from the grid and it will release power from the power wall in your, wherever you have the power wall at to offset how much power you were using. So that eventually, if you have enough power walls or if your draw is low enough, it will zero out. So no power will be flowing through because any power you're consuming inside of your home is being offset by the power wall. And the power wall is feeding that power back into your your home's electrical grid. And how it does that is down here, there's four 12 volt communication lines. And so as your gateway is detecting, hey, you know, somebody just started the microwave, they're using a kilowatt of power, it will communicate to the power wall in your basement through these wires, telling it, hey, go ahead and release one kilowatt of power. And so then that will zero it out and you won't be pulling any power from your electrical provider any longer, so it zeroes it. Um, each power wall current as of the power wall 2.0 can provide, I believe it's peak at seven kilowatts and then a continuous draw at five kilowatts. I almost, because I'm on a time of use plan, I almost never go above the five. I don't even go anywhere close to five. I just run my AC, which is 2.1 kilowatts, and then the microwave will come on and off. We have a couple of uh, computers that are running and then um, 
just the lights in the house. So most of the time we'll get up to about three and a half kilowatts that we're using, but most of the time we're, you know, less than a kilowatt because we're just running the computers with TV or two and the lights, and then we turn the AC on periodically. Um, so what happens, the whole point of the, the video is, you know, what happens in a power outage? And in a power outage, what you'll do is you'll have your solar hooked up to these, to your home side of the electrical network. And so your solar can feed into those lugs, which then can power your home. And the contactors in here, let's say the grid goes down, these contactors will open so that no power from your home will flow out through the electrical meter and into the whoever your power company is. And the reason for that is if somebody's, you know, wherever they're at trying to fix the power outage, if you're feeding power onto their grid, you're going to electrocute that guy. And so the contactors in here will open up and that protects the, the guy working on the electrical lines. And then it lets your house continue to have power supplied by the power wall. And if you have solar, then the solar will feed into your home's electrical system and it will recharge your power wall during the day and then discharge at night. And truly, if you have enough power walls that your power wall can supply your house with all of its power needs from dusk until dawn, and then it will recharge again during the day, eventually you don't really need your, your utility any longer because you're completely self-sufficient based on the power wall fulfilling all of your electrical needs when the sun's down and then your power walls being recharged as well as supplying all the power for your home during the day. So it's kind of a pretty neat concept. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that I wanted to talk about, but overall that's, that's how it works. And so my solar is actually being installed next week and I'm going to have them install them, you know, down on these lugs so that if we ever have an extended power outage, this, you know, the power wall I have as well as the gateway will keep me up and running for hopefully a very long time. Uh, thanks so much and feel free to ask any questions or correct anything if I stated anything incorrectly.